My name is Nicholas Cullinan and I curated the Edvard Munch exhibition. I'm going to talk today about some of my favourite paintings in the exhibition. This is a motif that he painted about 12 times in his career. You have this very kind of claustrophobic scene with this couple, this man and woman, in this rather ambiguous embrace. It could be a gesture of love, but it could also be, as the title implies, something more sinister. Now if we compare this painting to the one across, you see how much Munch transforms his paintings as he works on them over a number of years. And so for example, with this version, which he painted almost three decades later, you have the same couple embracing, but now rather than being set in this very dark claustrophobic interior, he's put it in this rather bucolic uh, outdoor scene with daylight flooding in, and of course much more color seeping into the painting. This painting, Red Virginia Creeper, is one of my favorite paintings in the exhibition. You have this tension between this figure in the foreground, and then of course this sense of the space receding away very quickly. It's very cinematic. And you see this same device explored in all the other paintings on this wall. You have this road and these very strong diagonal lines that basically both draw you into the painting, but also create this almost vertigo-inducing feeling of this tension between the foreground and the background. So this room, I think, is uh, one of my favorite rooms in the exhibition because it unites for the first time six versions of a motif he painted in 1907 called The Weeping Woman. And here you see this uh, female figure in uh, a bedroom looking very downcast and uh, dejected and pensive. And we don't know why Monk painted this uh, so obsessively, but obviously he was very drawn to the subject matter. And not only did he paint it um, in these six paintings, but he made a sculpture. And he actually intended this sculpture to be his grave marker, so it must have held great personal significance for him. In 1930, Munch uh, develops a hemorrhage in one of his eyes, which uh, starts to cloud his vision, and this must have been quite terrifying for a painter. But what Munch does is um, typically defiant and brave. He actually starts to paint his own afflicted vision. So these two paintings here, you see this strange mass that's starting to cloud and obscure his vision, and he talks about this taking on sometimes the form of a bird. Self-portraiture becomes a real mainstay. He seems fascinated by his own image, but not in a way that's vain. He doesn't flinch from painting his own deteriorating physical presence. He's basically documenting his life and he's using himself as a model. And perhaps one of the most remarkable paintings in the final room is self-portrait between the clock and the bed. You see Monk here in his studio as an old man, quite frail, surrounded still by his paintings, but it's also an allegory, and it's about time passing and death approaching. This black and red cross-hatching, which you see here, which is a very bold way to make a painting, uh, directly influenced Jasper Johns in some of his paintings. It shows how influential Monk has been to uh, generations of artists after him. Thank you.